Welcome to this new episode of Your Next Trade, episode number 33, called OPEX Stop. So what we've seen over the last few weeks is we had two phenomena. The first phenomenon was and is still artificial intelligence, where most of those stocks that have exposure or so-called exposure to artificial intelligence will be putting the market much higher. And the second phenomenon, which has been ongoing since 2020, is the use of options and mostly call options to drive the market higher. Um, and as of Friday, so that was a couple of days, what we had is the option expiry on a quarterly basis, uh, which is you're going to have four big option expiries uh, on the third Friday of March, June, September and December. And what happened most of the time is you're going to have a gamma squeeze. So if we look at the charts here, here that was, let me give you, that was in May, uh, as of uh, a month ago, where we had the expiry and after we came a bit, so we are looking at the S&P, then we rallied really big time over the last month since the last expiry. And actually, we literally made the highest, the print, uh, when the S&P expired. And uh, you need to keep in mind that the S&P futures will be expiry on the open of the US market. So if you are in the UK, that will be 2.30. If you are obviously in New York, that will be 9.30 a.m. So that is the time when the S&P futures will be expiring. And that explained a lot of what has been happening over the last few weeks, which is this massive use of call options, which has been dry driven the market much higher. So let's look now at the year to date asset performances. As, as always, we're going to be looking at uh, how the different assets have been performing we're going to be looking at what is the technical analysis telling us and as well of macro and what are the next drivers so starting with the year-to-date asset performances now the uh, s p is roughly up 15 percent um the Nasdaq is double that, 30%. Uh, what we see now is, is Japan is more or less the same as, the, um, as the, the Nasdaq. But you need to keep in mind that for the year, uh, actually, the Japanese yen is down. So it's down 8%. So there's, there's always people that will tell you, oh, Euro, Europe is, is up there, uh, Japan is up there. But keep in mind that you need to adjust for, for the currency. So still, uh, anything that is in blue has been very strong. Uh, dollar has been a bit weakish, uh, uh, as we're going to see for, for the week. But overall, uh, we have been trading in a range for, for the dollar over the last few few, few weeks and months. Uh, crypto is still very much up. And, and for the global picture, in terms of commodities, which is the same, we get the safe haven of the gold uh, up 7% and WTI down 10% and now roughly around the trading around the, the $70 uh, and has been uh, struggling. Week to date, so week to date, we had a very strong week. Um, that is some thing that we mentioned again over the last month or so, which is that you get this phenomenon, uh, which is uh, driven mostly by those weekly options. And on Thursdays and Fridays, you will have a very strong equity market, stock market. Uh, that was the case this Thursday, less on Friday, because as I said, the S&P was expiring. But as we can see, uh, US market up 3%, Japan up 4.5%, Euro stocks for uh, obviously Europe 2.4%. So overall, uh, equity market up 2 to 3%. We had a bit of weakness of the US dollar, which was true uh, since mostly since the ECB actually, from the ECB onwards or from, from Thursday onwards, uh, the, the US dollar uh, weakened at least against the, the Euro. Um, and for WTI, uh, and copper doing more or less the same move on the expectations that actually China will be uh, pumping up of putting some more stimulus in the economy. So they started to be more vocal about helping the economy. Uh, that started like a couple of weeks ago um, with uh, some cut rates and as well saying clearly that they're going to be doing some stimulus. So hopefully, uh, not hopefully, but obviously that is helping um, copper, that is helping to a certain extent uh, WTI. So year to date industry performance, the, the picture is, is still the same, up 50% for the, for the summer conductors at the other end of the spectrum. We get the regional banks that are uh, down 20%, 25%. I think the, the space is still the one to be watching because if you think about what has been happening this week is FOMC 
has been skipping any rate hike for the week, but they have been clearly saying that they're going to do another 25 to 50 bips. And that's not going to be helpful for the regional banks that are still experiencing hard flows. So for March onwards, there has been a slowing down of the news coming from regional banks, but we I'm still watching that space. Um, and that could be uh, really uh, one of the drivers in the next few months. S&P, this is where is the S&P. So as you can see, um, you're going to have most of the industries that will be down uh, versus or underperforming the S&P. Why? Because it is mostly driven by the same names and by the same sectors. So looking at this at this industry performance on the day, on the weekly basis, sorry, uh, US dollar, as I said, you know, a bit weak for the on this week. But interestingly, as you can see, the airlines very, very strong. So this is what the market is calling these days the traveling revenge. Uh, after COVID, you'll see um, a strong appetite from the consumers, not only in the US, but everywhere in the world to to uh, uh, to travel again. Uh, so I was recently long a stock in Europe, Chewy, uh, which did a capital increase and the stock has been up roughly 15% uh, since the start of the month. But airlines very, very strong, semiconductors as usual. So you're going to have the uh, the usual names that are or the in usual industries that will be uh, doing very well. But as you can see for this week, a, a lot of, of green. Uh, going forward, looking at the sector's performance, uh, year to date picture is still the same. IT up 40%. Uh, so that is really a strong number. Anything that is a bit defensive, healthcare, utilities, uh, consumer staples, flatty. So the, the market has been very much uh, aggressive. And same for the week. IT still outperforming up 4% for the week. Um, energy is still the laggard, really struggling. Uh, but overall, uh, a strong picture for, for, the, for the equity market. What about the rates? Looking at the 10, the 2. Um, so the 10 years is still at uh, around, uh, sorry, 3.7% in the US or 3.8%. Um, where actually we uh, the inversion of the yield curve looking at the 10 and the 2 has been uh, increasing again so we are almost uh, back to to the lows at minus one percent the reason is uh, the two years uh, has been moving mostly uh, we are now on the two years obviously around this 4.6 percent 4.7 percent why because the fed as i said um has been clear that they're going to be hiking rates a bit more. So they have been a bit more hawkish. Um, in the long run, uh, that tells you that it's not. It's still going to be not very good for the regional banks. And you could see some, some pressure on that space. What about the, the Fed funds rate? Uh, looking at uh, two things. So where were the Fed fund rates trading a month ago and where they are now? Uh, so we are looking at December as always to kind of understand what the market is pricing for the next six months. So as of the last, if you look at the 524 versus your 507, that is roughly a 17 bips. So the market is pricing between now and the end of the year, roughly uh, 17 bips. So let's say a quarter of 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 uh, of a point so that the, of a percent sorry so that will be 25 bips hike whereas the fed if you look at the dot uh, they will telling you that the 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 peak rate the terminal rate which is here should be at 5.6% in december so market is a bit less aggressive in terms of of the the hiking cycle at 5.2 uh, 5.3% whereas the the fed is saying 5.6% but what you can see and what is interesting is over a Months. So from the 16th to the, to the to Friday, we have a change of roughly 70 bips between the 4.58 and the 5.24. So a month ago, we market was expecting uh, the Fed to be cutting rates by roughly 50 bips between June and December, whereas now market is expecting the Fed to be hiking rates between roughly by 25 bips. So big change. Uh, why? Because the inflation is coming down probably quicker than what some people were expecting. And as well, that tells you that more market participants are expecting a no recession or really nice soft landing in H2. My view is still we're going to have a recession in H2. Uh, it's still driven by uh, the fact that the US consumer uh, will be struggling from H2. And as we're going to see with the retail sales, I don't think that the retail sales are that good. Looking at the VIX, as I know that the VIX is not perfect, especially these days. Um, 
time. So that will be the one month. So try to dig a bit further on what is the volatility, both the implied and the realized uh, telling you. But overall, the picture is uh, realized volatility uh, and implied volatility over the last months obviously have been on the way down. What has been interesting is the straddle uh, both on the daily and the weekly um, which were working pretty well if you were short those straddle until a month ago. That has not been the case because the, move, the market has been moving quite aggressively on the way up due to mostly the outlier on the on the right hand side uh, of the of the volatility structure, which is buying a lot of coal, so that has been uh, clearly um, disturbing the the volatility. So um, now I, I would like to be jumping into the technical analysis, starting as always with the S and P, and I've been for the week looking at the weekly. So last week I could not do. Uh, this um, your next trade video because I aged uh, one year more, but that's the overall pic picture on the the S and P. So since we broke the forty two hundred level, we have been trading higher. That has not got to be going my way, as I've been saying in the past. I've been short the S and P through uh, some uh, mostly some uh, put spreads, uh, and obviously put spreads when the market is going higher that doesn't help. Um, but overall, you know, uh, as I said, mostly driven by two uh, things: artificial intelligence and the options. Um, and we know, as I said, that uh, we got the OPEX and the gamma squeeze that happened uh, up to Friday. What about the Nasdaq? Nasdaq. Oh, let's let me go back. Sorry for to to the the S&P. So we're still going to have the 4320 level, uh, which is for the JP Morgan um, color, um, which is a big position that is expiring at the end of the month. So we can we could see at least, you know, uh, the market going back into the 4320. The issue that we're going to have is obviously there is a lot of hopes uh, built on the artificial intelligence and the earnings coming and the earnings are starting in a month's time. So you could see some other squeeze uh, going into uh, going into uh, this um, new earnings season. Nasdaq pretty strong as uh, when we broke the 13. Uh, 1300 we have been literally on the way up. You see the candles very, very strong. Russell, same picture, not strong. Uh, so it's mostly because of the regional banks and the exposure of the U.S. companies to the actually to the to, to the U.S. So not that strong. And the, the the Nasdaq versus the Russell is more or less the same as as before. So one of the drivers, one of the catalysts. This is always the same uh, uh, for any market. You need to be looking for for the winners, uh, for the leaders, and that has been the, the same names, the Meta, the Amazon, the Apple, the Microsoft, they have been driven the market. So as we're going to see later in the catalyst, this is something that I'll, I'll be watching every single day. Uh, and I'm watching of the same charts, which is as long as you are in those trends for names like Apple and some others, and I'm looking at weekly, there is no reason for the uh, market to go much lower. Um, so look at those at those talks. Uh, if they break the uh, important uh, uh, um, uh, uh, trend, then the market could be uh, turning. F why I'm looking at FedEx? Because FedEx is coming with the earnings this week, um, and FedEx is a good um, indication of how the world is doing and how the US. So they will tell you uh, in terms of macro what are the expectations for the next month, for the next six months. Sorry, uh, trying to to break a level here. Uh, needs a bit of confirmation, obviously, for from the earnings, um, and um, that's I think it's it's on Wednesday. Looking at uh, now the the regional banks picture is still the same, and and I will be uh, and I'm still thinking that uh, there is more uh, news, bad news coming out of that space, especially as the Fed is still keeping these hawkish views and rates are not coming down. So they are still experiencing outflows. Uh, the Fed has been trying as much as possible to be putting liquidity since March onwards. So that has been helping the liquidity and the risk appetite move that we had uh, since since March. Emerging markets, so mostly China, as you can see, uh, since the the expectations and the, the China has been telling us that they're going to be doing a more aggressive or at least a, a stimulus. The market uh, through the EM and through China has been doing pretty well. So that's last couple of weeks. Um, and that's pretty much telling you that the market is is, is, is very much driven by liquidity by central banks. Um, yes, you can argue uh, earnings are a bit better. Were they that better? They were coming down. Um, 
Excel I Spy, that's a bit of the same. So we had a bit of a, a two weeks uh, um, rally on, on those games like Caterpillar that we've seen in the past. Finally, looking at stocks. So this is for the Euro stocks, um, for, sorry, for the stock 600, um, still trading in the range. The DAX actually has been closing at an all time high. So pretty, pretty strong. Now looking at CL1 for the WTI picture is the same trading in the range despite the cut of, of the of um, Saudi Arabia and to me the picture is the same the world is not that strong plus you get the, an underlying um, fact that is we are going more and more into electrical vehicles and that means uh, supply between two to five million barrels is coming out of the market uh, and that's something uh, that is a big driver copper not that strong uh, a chart looking at your dollar as you can see so this is the move for the week that was mostly explained if we go back into a daily chart mostly explained over the last couple of days and mostly about thursday because the ecb was hawkish and saying we're going to be doing more so uh, the rates have been moving more in in, in europe that they have been moving in the us finally looking at the us dollar versus the japanese yen as long as the Bank of Japan will be that accommodative, uh, the uh, carry trade uh, will be weakening the, the Japanese yen. Um, so uh, Turkish Lira, so this is still the same for the Turkish Lira. There's going to be an important level. Everyone is, is looking at the same. So that's the 23.70 on a daily basis uh, for another move on the way down for the Turkish Lira. Coming back into the spread, uh, these uh, spreadsheets here, looking at what happened this week. So we started oh that was on tuesday with the the, the, the cpi which was here so um cpi if you look at the headline numbers were a bit better than expected the core is still the same pretty strong uh, so that means the fed has been struggling to be uh, very efficient as as, as putting the, the core uh, much lower but the market um, enjoyed this number um, then we had a lot of, of central banks so started with the FOMC meeting on, on, on Wednesday uh, I think actually that uh, power was pretty good um, on Friday, on, on, on Wednesday, sorry, and the explanation he was saying we're gonna be doing a skip this month. Uh, we're still gonna be okay for the next six months because we moved the dot the dot to 5.6 percent because we think the economy is doing well and the uh, in that inflation is sticky. Um, I think that is as well a reason why they did a skip is because the the treasury uh, needs to uh, rebuild its reserve its reserves and obviously that's much easier uh, to do it when uh, the, the, um, your central bank is a bit more accommodative. But uh, that means probably in July we're going to have another 25 bips. ECB on Thursday, um, ECB telling us they're going to be doing more, that they, got, they are going to be okay, that they are looking at inflation, that blah, blah, blah. As always, uh, the ECB will be following uh, and the Federal Reserve six months later, that has been the case for years and years. Um, but I think more importantly, it feels very much like the ECB is, is waiting for something to break uh, before being less hawkish. Finally, Bank of Japan between the night of, of Thursday to Friday, kind of a bit of the joke of the year um, where, you know, they wanted us to believe uh, that the change of the governor will be changing the policy. And now they are telling us that, no, they're not going to be doing anything very accommodative. Uh, 10 years is at 0.4%. They are still going to be doing quantitative easing. And if you look at the chart here, so that will be the S&P, uh, not sorry, not the S&P uh, 500, that was the other, uh, but that will be the, uh, uh, the the Bank of Japan balance sheet on the left-hand side, sorry, that's here, and the Nikkei on the right-hand side, and you can see the strong correlation. Obviously, if you put money um, and you're buying all the ETFs, that is helping those assets to go up. So. I find always a bit um, funny when, you know, you're going to have a lot of U.S. investors telling us, oh, it's brilliant, you know, Japan is much better than before. It's mostly because, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you go, you're going to have a very accommodative Bank of Japan and the carry trade, as we've seen before, um, is helping exporters uh, with a weakening of the Japanese yen. Retail sales, that was... Um, over the week as well so retail sales were a bit better but the reality is if you look more into details uh, the level of the retail sales in may 
were the same as they were in January. So we had a flattish return for the US consumer for the, for, for the year so far. To me, the question is mostly about H2, and I think the US consumer will be struggling. Then, as I said before, Overall, this is the story, and this is Gamma, this is OPEX, and you get the top of the OPEX, which is here, and that tells you why, because if you look at the S&P gold volumes over the years, and more recently, you get a massive spike. So market, again, is mostly driven, driven by options. So if you are an old guy like me, you have been mostly trading the cash in the past you'll be mostly now looking at where are the options trading what is the the pin where are the biggest strikes where are the biggest open interest for options so going forward based on that based on those um what has been happening let's look at the catalyst so market uh, tomorrow um on monday will be closed in the us we're still gonna have the nhb housing so a bit of a bit more than uh, usual for the housing through the NHB, the building permits. Um, there are the home sales as well on Thursday. So we know that um, the home builders have been doing pretty well in this market, despite all the, the bearishness that we had three or, or four months ago. Actually, I had no exposure in that space, long or short. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good on that. I thought like actually three months ago, there was too much of bearishness. Um, but what, what are the drivers? So we're going to have the flash PMIs on Friday. We're going to have now a lot of Fed speakers because, you know, the, the blackout period from the FOMC is over. So we get Powell on Wednesday and Thursday. So obviously, as is the boss, this is the one that you should be listening mostly. And um, we're going to have some headlines about the Chinese policy. Um, there are some uh, very uh, important people trying to rebuild the, uh, the talks between China and the US that are now traveling in the US, uh, uh, sorry, in China. And as well, we're going to have a bit more of um, central banks with the uh, Swiss national banks and the Bank of England, where the Bank of England is expected to hike rates by 25 bips. Uh, the, in the UK, there is much higher inflation than the other part of the world, uh, and, and that has been a concern. As I said, uh, earnings with a bit of FedEx, but uh, uh, really the earnings uh, uh, season is, is, is mostly over. Looking at, as always, like the weekly straddle, so looking at an eight and eight, at the money uh, straddle so s p at 1.1 percent so this is very low between uh, versus what we had in the past so that is what are the expectations again recently if you've been long the straddle that has been a good strategy was like a, as of like a month ago roughly uh, that was not a good strategy so what am i looking at in terms of catalyst again macro fed but as well i'm looking mostly at two things which are my options activity screener so um, if you are interested that is something that you can build or there are different websites so you'll be looking at any single day what are the uh, the names where you have uh, abnormal activity in options. So you'll be looking at the total options activity. So that will be here. You'll be looking at the call um, on the day and the call versus uh, any single day. And that will give you roughly, you know, by how much the stock could be, uh, not the stock could be moving, sorry, but by how much the the, the um, activity uh, on that space on, on, on the call is trading. And then you'll be looking at the put call. Uh, the, lo the, the lower the number is, the more aggressive People are buying the calls, obviously, and that, you know, very often you'll see a strong correlation between the activity in calls and the acti and how the stock has been uh, outperforming. That is something that I explain on the Discord community. So if you're not on the Discord community, I explained this week that if you look at Nike, uh, I think that was Nike on, on, on Wednesday, where there was a big opening of calls at 111 um, in the morning, very early morning in the US, in the first 15, 20 minutes, uh, there was... Um, a lot of activity in the stock. Uh, obviously, you had a, 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 some decent uh, gamma squeeze on the stock, which uh, very quickly went from 107 to 111, 112 uh, due to those uh, option activity. And finally, 
And with options, you need to be looking at what why the market has been so strong. As I said, it's artificial intelligence and the gamma squeeze. But you know, where are the leaders? Uh, and as long as those leaders, so we are talking from Nvidia to uh, AMD, every single day, what I'll be doing is I'm gonna have you know one watch list of those names. I'll be trying to to see how those names will be behaving on the day, how they will be behaving on five days, but as well, how is the volume on the day? So try to compare the volume on the day versus average over the last 20 days, 50 days. If there is some significant change, we, you could assume that there will be a change um, in, this, um, in this market going forward. But again, market still doing the same. Let's see the, if there is a bit of a, um, of a reset after the option expiry. Um, my view is still the same. H2 will be recession um, and, and the market uh, will might realize that at one stage. So this is it for me today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Put some comments. Join us on the trading community. And um, and this is it for me for this week. Bye-bye.